Hi, it's Dave Arman. I'm at Sustainable Brands, and I'm fortunate to be with Danielle Azale. And uh, Danielle is with L'Oreal USA, and you yep. head up sustainability and CSR. Yes, I do. And uh, like me, you're based in New York. So I am. It's a privilege yeah. to be out here in Vancouver. I know, it's so beautiful. It's isn't it? beautiful, mm -hmm. absolutely. So uh, we're talking a little bit about a big milestone in your business today. Yeah. Um, you've got a, a whole bunch in the L'Oreal portfolio, mm -hmm. um, and maybe you can give us a little bit about a background about the company. But uh, today, there's cradle to cradle certification that has happened for uh, maybe f uh, five of your products. Yes. And and I'd love to hear kind of why you pursued that and what the what what the business uh, ramifications are for Garnier, which is the unit, and yeah. and for L'Oreal USA. Sure. So yeah, as you say, we're here. Uh, to launch the uh, Garnier Cradle to Cradle certification for five SKUs. They're the first mass market skincare brand uh, to launch a Cradle to Cradle certified product and to launch with multiple products is also a pretty unique, um, a unique achievement in the Cradle to Cradle world. So we're really proud about this achievement. Um, Garnier is the third brand within our portfolio. Uh, to achieve cradle to cradle certification. So back up a little <laughs> bit about L'Oreal. I, I know sure. you know globally. I think you're the, the largest beauty products company in the world. Right. right? Okay. Mm -hmm. So what what are what are the largest brands under the L'Oreal name? Sure. So Garnier certainly is one of them. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, in our uh, professional products division, we have Redken, Matrix. Um, in our luxury division, we have Kiehl's. Uh, in our uh, consumer products division, we have um, Maybelline New York, Garnier. There's a, uh, okay. we have over 35 So, so brands. you're clearly, you're, you're a, uh, a house of brands, not a branded house. Yes, correct. Okay. I and mean, we are both, of course, L'Oreal Paris is our flagship uh, brand. And but I, I walked by the Hudson Bay Company yesterday, yeah. walking over to the conference, and I looked at, in their cosmetics uh, you know, department, uh -huh. which went forever. Yeah. And I, I even took a picture of the uh, the Kiehl's sign on the on the door, because I'm used right. to Kiehl's just being this little place on 6th Avenue <laughs> in the city, right. but it's not anymore. You right. guys got your hands on it. It's and a really global brand now, yeah. Yeah, you went to town. Yeah. Uh, so now Garnier having these five products with cradle to cradle <laughs> certification, um, you know, from a business perspective, what um, what does that gain you? Like, is sure. that a, is that is cradle to cradle known by consumers? Would they actually make a buying decision based on that? I mean, ultimately, I'm a consumer as well, and I certainly make buying decisions based on these things. And I know there are a lot of consumers out there that do. Um, under our global program, our global sustainability program, sharing beauty with all, there are two KPIs that we feel like cradle to cradle fits really nicely into. The first one is that uh, by 2020, 100% of our products are gonna have an environmental and social improvement. Um, and then the second one is that we want to find tangible ways to communicate our sustainability efforts to our consumers. And so Cradle to Cradle is actually a similar approach to us, has a similar approach to us to sustainability in that it's really a holistic value chain approach. Um, there are five criteria that we were uh, assessed on, okay. um, whether that's uh, renewable energy, water stewardship, material health, material reutilization, and then of course social fairness. It's one of the few certifications that actually uh, integrates the social piece of it. So it, it figures in human rights and the way you treat yeah. your employees and, and all of that, not just the environmental factors. Right. That's a interesting. 360, I've yeah. heard Bill McDonough speak, but clearly yeah. I wasn't paying close attention. <laughs> to all of the criteria. And what's the difference between the silver status, which you have on these sure. five products, and, and maybe gold or platinum? I'm not sure what the levels are. Yeah, so you're um, given actually a gold, silver, or platinum rating on each of those five criteria, and then the product itself takes on the lowest, um, the lowest rating, because of course we wanna make sure that inbuilt is this drive for continuous improvement mm -hmm. as well. Um, so all of these products actually scored platinum for material health. So the formulation is the best that it can possibly be. Um, but right now we're focused on um, really in working on the water stewardship uh, piece of it. This okay. year is the year of water at L'Oreal and um, we're committed to in two years when we get recertified for these projects to, or for these products to actually improve. So demonstrate our improvement. That's great. Yeah. Um, and, and do you just 
you know, what, what was involved in actually getting the certification? Uh, m my impression is that, you know, you probably have to do a lot of work before you can actually show up with your paperwork and say, yeah. please consider us. Like, is that something that you consult with them on or do you do this internally and hire a bunch of uh, chemists and you know, sure. PhDs? How does it work? Luckily, we have a bunch of chemists and PhDs that work for us. And, um, and so they were certainly involved in that process. Um, we went through a really good learning experience last year uh, with the cradle to cradle certification when our biolage raw shampoo and conditioner was certified um, and we took those learnings and we applied them to our whole, whole product portfolio across the board and these this product line stood out as a really great contender for certification as is. So these are the same great products that people are used to seeing uh, in Target, Walmart, CVS. Do we Walgreens. have any of them here? Yeah, let's, we do. Let's, let's uh, see a couple Come of them. Come on, over. You, okay. well, there thank you, such a good We cat. have an off-camera pro here who's good, a good pitcher. So there you go. So um, as you can see, it's 99% naturally derived ingredients. Um, and then you know, they, what they do a really good job of is being very clear about um, what the ingredients are um, and really what the derived source is. We're trying to, and then the bottles made from 30% post-consumer recycled plastic. Good. All of our bottles across the board are um, integrating uh, post-consumer recycled or the papers FSC certified um, and then f plastic, glass, what you name it. We're really trying to be into, you know, think in terms of circularity and, and how do we even um, identify or help our consumers um, when they're done with the bottles to properly recycle them. Um, so that's our, that's, that's a great that's story. I have two daughters uh, mm -hmm. who are, one's 19, the other one's 21 and they're, yeah. they're, they're, you know, consumers of beauty products great. and uh, they, uh, they're definitely um, strong minded when it mm -hmm. comes to like uh, uh, buying from uh, sort of disruptive boutique brands, yeah. but it's usually on the criteria that you're describing, you know, social consciousness sure. and, and environmental stewardship. So um, is this, you know, is this being driven by, you know, sort of these these disruptors and boutique companies um, in, in, in part? I don't really know what your market share stats are like, but do you see moving the needle on, on consumer preference based on this? Ultimately, we are a very consumer-centric company, and it's true that the market for um, for sustainable products is growing. And but we've been doing this work in our operations and in our company since 2005. So um, that we were able to reach a major sustainability milestone last year uh, in the USA with 100% renewable electricity. Uh, we have good for you. Yeah, we have 45 miles of solar panels in the U.S. across the U.S., which is kind of insane to think about when you think about that scale. Um, Especially with an office in New York City. You know, yeah. where, do, where do you put those panels? But yeah, I'm sure they're yeah. elsewhere. Well, we're a lead certified. We're in a lead, actually a lead platinum building in, in the city. But um, yeah, so just thinking about all of those elements um, and how they come together. And actually, I totally forgot your question. I'm don't, sorry. Don't but worry. Don't worry. We're, we're, we're going to do some editing. Uh, <laughs> yeah, this, we're not going to run this thing unc uncut. Yeah, so yeah. I, th I think we're good there. Um, is there anything I didn't ask you that I should? What do you think? Great. Yeah, so answering that consultant yeah, yeah. question, yeah. like, yeah, how long does that take? Just, okay, yeah, let me rephrase it because I got a good point on that, um, mm -hmm. which is, um, so our audience are largely corporate responsibility professionals, sure. practitioners in sustainability, and they, they love to get inspired at conferences like Sustainable Brands and, and learn about this stuff. Yeah. So the, the process of actually going through this, if they're going to pitch this to their to their management team about mm -hmm. investing in, in certification, you know, it just is interesting to know whether this is like a, a five-year adventure that costs a million dollars, or is this something that you know you kind of tackled in a year? I'm just curious. No, yeah, it certainly didn't cost a million dollars. Um, we did this, I think, in about four months, we were able to get the certification. Um, of course, we've been building the good practice in our operations for a long time. And so I think that helped us in terms of renewable energy and water stewardship. We were able to really demonstrate um, that, you know, we try to be best in class and that what, what and we're so doing. And so give an is, attaboy to your consulting partners here. Yeah, who, yeah. who helped you out with well, this? So the great thing about Cradle to Cradle is there's the brand, then there's MBDC, that's the assessor um, that we work directly with one-on-one uh, -on -one yeah. to identify, um, you know, they go very 
they do a deep dive into our operations and learn all about our, you know, the ingredients we're using and what our processes are. And then once they're done with the assessment, they hand it off to the Cradle to Cradle Institute. So the brand actually doesn't have any interaction with the Cradle to Cradle Institute. That's right. the validator of the assessment. So that this whole process is very robust in and of, of itself. And it sounds like there's nice separations of church and state there Absolutely. so that they can't be influenced commercially. Yeah. So yeah. that's great. Well, Danielle, thanks for sharing the story. Yeah. Congratulations Thank on you. the upgrade on the line in terms thanks of the certification. Interest. And yeah. um, from Sustainable Brands, this is Dave Arman for 3BL Media. Take care. <laughs>